Praise the Lord, saints. This is Elder Joseph Cotton from Maxwell Gospel Church, where Jesus Christ is Lord. I'm so glad that you tuned in to watch Friday night Holy Ghost service. Amen. Shout outs to to the Acts Full Gospel family. Amen. We've been having an awesome time in the Word of God. Amen. Every Sunday at eight eight o'clock and also at eleven thirty a.m. Come on out and worship with us. Everything is safe. Everything is good. We'll love to see your face in the building. Amen. But I believe I have a word tonight for the Holy Ghost service. Amen. As we prepare to go into a new year, I believe the key to success for the new year is prayer. Amen. Prayer, my brothers and sisters. It's what we need to do. And so I want to minister a little bit about prayer because people believe that prayer is just you talking to God. But what about God talking back to you? Amen. Because we do a lot of talking and a lot of thinking and, and, and asking, but we need to learn how to listen after we pray. Amen. And that's what I want to talk about tonight. Amen. So if you can get your Bibles, turn with me to Matthew 6. And I want to start off with the Lord Jesus Christ talking about praying. Amen. So Matthew 6, verse 6. And I'm going to read it in the King James Version. Amen. And I might flip over to the NIV Version. But I want to talk about prayer. Amen. And how important it is. But the scripture says here, but thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to the Father, which is in secret, and the Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like going to them. For your father knoweth what things you have need of before you even ask. And this is the Lord Jesus Christ talking. God knows everything you have need of before you even ask him. We need to understand that our life was already planned out in the sight of God. God is not waiting for something to happen so that he can show up in your life. God already knows what's going to happen in your life. And he already have the provision for the problem that you have in your life. Amen. But we got to stand on the word of God and know that if God allowed it to come to us, he's not going to allow us to go through it without him being there. Amen. If he allowed it to come to us, he knows that it's going to help us or shape us in some kind of way. Amen. And so if we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God, we shouldn't get worried about when things happen to us. But we take it to God in prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. So he says, be thou, but thou, but thou, in verse 6, but thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. So is he talking about a physical closet? He's talking about a room that's private. Go somewhere private where you can talk to God in secret. Amen. Because you don't need to let everybody know what you're praying about. Because when you pray and you let everybody else know what you're praying about, they can put negativity into your spirit. And instead of you having faith, you start operating with unbelief. Because you got a whole bunch of unbelievers speaking the word into your spirit. And, and even though you believe in God for some, but enough negativity can make any person doubt. Because there's a time frame between asking and receiving. He says, so go in secret. Go into your secret place. Go into the bathroom. Go into a closet if you can fit up in there. Or go into another room where nobody else is at. Where you can spend some alone time, some private time with God the Father and talk to him about what's going on in your life. Even though he already knows. But he wants a relationship with you. And so in the Bible, he tells us to ask 
and you shall receive. Amen. So it's still important for us to ask, even though we know God knows what we have need of, but he still wants you to ask. So when he blesses you with what he's giving you, you know you didn't get it from nobody else but God. It might have came through that woman. It might have came through that man. But it was God that that blessed you with the things that you had need of. Amen. And it, so he said, go into thy closet. And, and when thou shut the door, pray to the Father which is in secret. So he's talking about a place where just you and God can talk. Build your relationship. So that you can know God better. God already know everything about you. Let me say that again. God already knows everything about you, my brother and my sister. But you need to know God. But you need to know God. And the only way you can know him better is spending time with him. So in secret, you learn how to talk to God. You learn how to listen and to pray in secret. Don't share with everybody your prayer requests. And he says, and your father would see if in secret shall reward you openly. Why would he reward you openly? Because he wants to get the glory out of your life. Even though you prayed in secret and other people could, 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 could know you in a hot mess. But when God blesses you and raise you up for his glory and honor, he got to do that in the open. He does it in the open so that you can have a testimony, so you can have an opportunity to tell somebody else about the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why he blesses you openly so that you can testify and say, hey, I was dead, but now I'm alive. I was broke. But now I've got money in the bank. I usually didn't pay my tithes and get my offerings. But now I pay my tithes and get my offerings. And money just keep on coming. Just money just keep on coming. Why? Because the word of God is alive in your life. God wants the word of God to be alive in your life. But you got to be obedient to the word of God. And the only way you're going to be convinced that the word of God is true is for you to start quoting scriptures back to God and standing on faith. And standing on faith, and in due time, you shall reap if you don't give up. You shall reap if you not faint. So you got to ask God, the Father, in secret. And he will reward you openly. And then in verse 7, he says, But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. In the NIV version, it says, And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like a pagans, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. No, we don't do what the unbelievers do. We pray and we stand on the we stand on the word of God. We pray and we wait. We pray and we wait. We pray and we wait. Cause we know that it's on its way. We pray and we wait. When matter of fact, why are you waiting? Start saying hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I know my blessing is on its way. I know you're going to change my life around. I know you're going to bless me with my heart desire. I know that you heard my prayer, so I'm thanking you like I already got it. See, sometimes we need to start praising God like we already have it. Because that moves the hand of God. Because when you start thanking him for getting it before you get it, that is showing God that you believe that he's going to do it. Amen. So we say you don't have to be like the heathen do, using vain repetitions and, and over and over and, 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 and doing stuff to, to show bold and, and let people know that you you praying and you believe in God. And sometimes we just need to shut up about some stuff. Amen. Joseph in the Bible, he wanted to tell his brothers about his dream and they backstabbed him and sold him into slavery. You better watch out for some brothers and sisters because they can get jealous about some of the things God going to do in your life. So everybody shouldn't be a part of that conversation when you believe in God for something. Amen? Because jealousy can pop in. Haters 
always around waiting to pounce on somebody. That's why that, that, that old song, smiling in your face all the time, trying to take your place. The backstabbers, backstabbers. You got to watch out for the backstabbers. Because they will poke you so much, your nickname will be Pokemon. Because they just poking you every time you turn around. So, pray in secret. Let God reward you openly. And when he rewards you openly, you thank him and give him all the praise and all the glory. Because that's your opportunity to win souls to the Lord Jesus Christ. Because some people are not going to come to God until they see God perform a miracle in your life. Let me say that again. It's some people that's been watching you talk about God all the time, talking about Jesus all the time, but they don't see no evidence. But this is the season where we're going to see the evidence we're going to see the fruits of our labor. We're going to pray and we're going to stand on the word of God. And God is going to perform a miracle in your life so that you can use it as a testimony to win somebody else to the Lord Jesus Christ. Because we serve a good God, an awesome God, and he wants to bless you for the rest of your life. But you got to stand on his word. So don't let unbelievers. Get to hating and talking to you. Tell them to get out your face because our God is more than able to bless you. So it says, don't use vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. And in verse 8, he said, but, but be not ye therefore like one to them, for your father knoweth what things you have need of, because your father knoweth what things you have need of before you even ask him. God already knows everything going on in your life. He know what time you're going to wake up. He know the secret stuff that you do. He know the good. He know the bad. He know the sideways stuff. Whatever way you look at it, God knows about it. But guess what? He still love you. And he died for you. When we was lost in sin, high, high out our mind, drank out, smoked out, cracked out, snorted out, pill popping out, and whatever else done struck you out. I'm telling you, God still love you despite of all of that. He the only one that can resurrect your life. He the only one can put your life back in place. He's the only one that specializes in the resurrection. See, the gospel is the good news. It's the death, the burial, and the resurrection. It's good news that when we die, we're going to live again over in glory. But God want to resurrect your life while you're here on earth. He can change your whole life around if you start building up a relationship with him, start talking to him, praying to him, and to eliminate the haters that's going to speak negativity in your life. Get rid of them haters. Stop hanging out with them people. Them people don't like you anyway. You know they don't like you, but you're still trying to be accepted to them. They're not going to like you because you are light in the midst of darkness. That's why they talk about you because you got a little light on you. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. I want you to know your little light is shining in the midst of darkness. And people that's doing evil do not like the light. People that's in darkness do not like the light. They don't like it because it exposes them for the evil that they're doing. So stop hanging out with evildoers. Connect yourself to God. Don't you know God can bless you with your heart desire? He can turn your sad days into the happy days. Amen. He can turn your sad days into happy days. He can turn your morning into dancing. He say weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Just keep on praying and believe in God. And watch him perform a miracle in your life. Watch this turn to Matthew 7, verse 7. 
Watch this. Matthew 7, verse 7. He says this. This is the King James Version. Amen. He says, and he said, ask and it shall be given unto you. What do I say? Now, this is a red letter. This means this is the Lord Jesus Christ talking. And he told you in Matthew 7, verse 7, he said, ask. Ask. You need to open up your mouth and ask. A lot of people complaining about God not doing nothing in their life. He told you to ask and it shall be given unto you. He said, if you ask for it, I'm going to give it to you. He said, seek and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be open unto you. For everyone that acteth receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be open. What else do you need to know? When God is saying, that's all you need to do is ask me. He's saying it shall be given unto you. A good measure, he going to give it to you. He gonna bless you with your heart desire. He said, ask for it according to his will. Now, if you wanna ask for something stupid, he ain't gonna give that to you. He not gonna give something negative to you. The devil does that. God is into blessing his children with good things. Things that's healthy. Things that's good. Things that, that becomes a blessing. That, that you can share with your family and your loved ones. God is not going to, man, God, I want to rob a bank and get away. God ain't going to answer that prayer. Lord, I want to go into, I'm, I'm mad right now. Matter of fact, I'm about to go rob this store. Lord, can you protect me while I go do a robbery? God ain't going to protect you while you do no robbery. You're going to reap what you sow. You're going to end up being a robbery victim. It's called you gonna become a lick. A lick is when somebody going out to rob some. I'm I'm going to hit a lick. I'm going to hit a lick. I'm going to steal some. I'm going to take some from somebody. I'm going to I'm going to hit a lick. You don't want to be a lick, my brothers and sisters. So we got to trust God with everything that we have. Matter of fact, you need to pray. A little bit more. You need to pray before you leave the door outside. Sometimes we so much in the rest in the morning time, we forget to pray. Now, I know I'm telling the truth because sometimes it, it happened to me. Here I am filled with the Holy Ghost. Sometimes things get rushing and get depressing. And before you know it, it done slipped my mind and I done forgot to pray. So now I'm in the car repenting on my way to do something for God. And I don't even feel right. So I got to pray and pray in the car while I'm driving. Pray and watch and drive and pray and pray and pray. Because I forgot to pray when I was at home before I left outside. We need to take time. Slow down. Learn to pray. Learn to talk to God. And he said, ask and he said, it shall be given unto you. That means don't worry about it. It's on its way. Now, you might not get it when you want it to come. But God said it's on its way if you wait for it. It might be tomorrow. Matter of fact, it might be today. But then it might be 30 days from now. Matter of fact, it could be six months from now. Matter of fact, it could even be a year from now. But God is going to bless you what you ask for. You just got to wait for it. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Man, sometimes we got to wait for that thing. But don't give up because a delay is not a no. A delay is not a no. That means you just got to wait for it. But when you pray, I want to give you a pointer. When you pray, my brothers and sisters. See, we so used to doing all the talking when we pray, that we forget to listen. So I have learned after I pray, because if you tell the truth, you run out of words. And before you know it, you're saying the same thing you already said. That's why I say don't use vain repetitions. Pray and then learn how to meditate. Meditating, being quiet, in that secret place 
whether in your closet, whether in a bedroom that's empty, whether it's in your living room on the floor, wherever you can spend quality time with God. He said, after you pray, listen. How do you listen? You block out everything that's going on. And you put your mind, you put your mind on the Lord. Just put your mind on the Lord. Think of the Lord Jesus. Elevate your thinking to the Lord Jesus. Put your mind on God. See yourself doing what you're asking for. See yourself receiving the blessings. But let there be silent so that you can have ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. So meditation is a key to what I do because I know how to talk and try to pray a lot, but I find myself repeating some stuff I already said. And that's when you should start praying over in the Holy Ghost. But after all of that, you need to be quiet to hear what the Lord is saying about what you ask for. So what is praying? Praying is talking to God, communicating with God. And the more you communicate with God, the closer you will get with God. Then the more you will be able to hear his voice when he talks to you. Because he say, my sheep know my voice and another they will not follow. God want to lead you and guide you. God want to bless you with that wife. He want to bless you with that husband. But we have people, we have people that's trying to pick their wife. They trying to pick their husband, but they not asking God about it. Is this my wife, God? Is this my husband, God? No, we want to pick the big booty and a smile and then ask God to bless it. And you need to remember BBD, big booty and a smile. This girl is poison, poison. You can end up hooking up with somebody that's poison and you asking God to bless it. When God is not into making mistakes, but he ain't going to go against your will. But what you should be doing when you're praying and asking God, you need to be pacific. And matter of fact, because God want to be involved in every aspect of your life. Every aspect. He want to be a part of every decision you make. He want, want you to ask him, who is my, my husband? Who is my wife? And let God reveal it to you. God, I got too many women around me. Lord, show me which one is my wife. You know what I like? You know what I need because you created me, but I need to know who is my wife. And believe me, God will show you. A lot of men right now is looking for wives, and there's a whole bunch of single women around. But I believe they can't identify their wife because it's like they went into the into an ice cream parlor, 31 flavors. What flavor you like? And that's how they look at the women, like 31 flavors. They look at that, oh, I like her over there. Oh, oh, I like her too. Oh, I like that butter pecan. Oh, I like that vanilla girl. Oh, I like that dark chocolate girl. Oh, I like that. Oh, I like that brown girl. Oh, I like, oh, I like 31 flavors and you can't even make up your mind. Choose one. Choose one. You can't have two. Choose one. But you should include God in that decision. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, it's a lot of women around. And you know, you say it's not good for man to be alone. Can you tell me who is my wife, Lord Jesus, so that I can make the right decision? And I know if I pick the woman you tell me to pick, I know my life is going to be blessed. Don't you know God will answer your prayer? Because the Bible did say it's not good for man to be alone. Even the women. It's not good for you to be alone. That's how some little fast joker. Come running up in your in, in your face. Smiling. And, 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 and say a, a couple little honey dudes this. And honey do that. And make you some promises. And, and before you know it. They done snatch your heart out your body. And your heart all broken up. And you're crying. 
We ain't crying no more. We're going to make the right decision. Amen. We're going to ask God to help us pick our mate because he wants you happy. Your daddy, God the Father, wants to see his children happy. But first off, we got to get out of sin because God hates sin. He loved a sinner, but he hates what you do. But thank God. He sent Jesus to die for all your sins. But you cannot play God like his side piece. Jesus is the main meal. He's the whole meal. He not no appetizer. God is first in everything that we do. God is first in everything we do. And I, and I, and I was talking to a brother earlier. Some people connect God and the church together. Keeping God first in your life He's talking about you having a personal relationship with Jesus. You spending time with him praying in your closet in a secret place. Serving in ministry comes after your family. Let me say that again. Serving in ministry comes after your husband or your wife. Amen. Keeping God first is you making sure you stay in communication with God concerning everything in your life because he want to be a part of every decision. But some people pray and ask God for a blessing. And then all of a sudden they say, they, they, they get the blessing. And they say, hold on, God, I got this one right here. I'm going to make up my mind in this area right here. But I know you're going to bless me. I know you're going to bless me. No, 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 no. Ask God what you should do in that situation. And if, and if we, and when he tell you what to do, then he will bless it. Amen. Because he the one told you what to do. But you trying to put a blessing on something that you decided to do. God don't make no mistakes. If you ask him, he will lead and guide you and direct your path. Because he said a good man, and that goes for woman too, a good man steps are ordered by the Lord. So it says, Matthew 7, verse 7, ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that acteth, receiveth, and he that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened unto you. Or what man is there of you, whom his son asks bread? Will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he give him a serpent? If then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? God is waiting to give you a good thing. But you ain't talking to him enough. God been waiting on you this whole time. He got the blessings already by him. He got your money. He got your health. He got everything you need. It's all a part of the package deal. Don't you know when you get saved, it's a package deal. Everything your heart desires comes along with Jesus. Peace comes with Jesus. Love comes with Jesus. Temperance comes with Jesus. Money comes with Jesus. Money comes with Jesus. He take care of all your building and to bless you to be debt free. God wants to take care of his children, but he don't force himself on none of them. My brothers and sisters, we need to pray more. If we really want to see change in our community, we really want to see our family blessed, we have to pray more. And I'm not just talking to you, I'm talking to myself too. We want to have an intimate relationship with God because he loves us that much. So my brothers and sisters, as I end this service, I want to pray with you and give you an opportunity because I know this message probably made somebody say, ouch. But that's okay. I did it in love. But I want you to stop settling for less when God want to give you his best. Stop settling for less when God want to give you 
his best. If you can repeat after me and say, Lord Jesus, forgive me for all my sins. I do believe that you died on the cross and was buried. And on the third day, God the Father raised you from the dead. And right now, Lord Jesus, I open the doors to my heart and I receive you into my heart as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. If you just prayed that prayer, you just received salvation, my brother. Now try to find a church home. I want to invite you to come to Actual Gospel Church where Jesus Christ is Lord and where Bishop Bob Jackson is your pastor. Amen. We love you. We thank you. And if you appreciate this broadcast on YouTube and Facebook, please send a donation so that we can continue to do the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. You can give on the cash app at Acts Full Gospel Oakland. You also can pay your tithes and offerings on Givelify. You also can go to our website at actsfullgospel.org. Actsfullgospel.org. And look for the donation button. And whatever you're going through, my brothers and sisters, it's not too hard for God. But remember this. We love you. And there's not a thing you can do about it. God bless you.